It's just a matter of weeks before the unique interstellar comet. An urgent cosmic alert found its way into observatories and living rooms at the same time. 3i Atlas, the mysterious interstellar visitor, is no longer just passing by. Its trajectory is tightening, its speed is rising, and for the first time, astronomers are warning it could collide with Mars. The language felt wrong in the mouths of careful people. Words like guided, targeted, missile, but the numbers kept pushing them there. If impact occurs, the red planet could witness destruction on a scale not seen for billions of years. This is the story of a wanderer from the stars that suddenly looks less like a passerby and more like a participant, and why the next few months may rewrite more than just a chapter in a textbook. Breaking news from NASA landed with the kind of gravity that stops conversations mid-sentence. A brand new image of the interstellar visitor, captured as it tore through the outer edges of our solar system, arrived from the Gemini Knot telescope in Hawaii. It showed 3i Atlas glowing with a compact cloud of gas and dust. The classic comet portrait, except nothing about this object has been classic. This is only the third interstellar object ever detected after Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. First discovered on July 1st by the Atlas survey, this one is different in a way that makes cautious people careful and excitable people right. The early estimates called it a cosmic giant, an astonishing 12 miles across, far larger than any interstellar visitor we've seen before. Scientists think this ancient traveller may even predate our solar system, possibly born in the thick disk of the Milky Way billions of years ago. That means the stuff it carries isn't just old, it's older than our sun. As it absorbs sunlight, its icy heart wakes up, releasing gas and dust, and drawing a portrait of a world that formed under rules we're just starting to meet. Its journey is only beginning, but it has already started to bend nerves. In late October, 3i Atlas will swing closest to the Sun, just inside the orbit of Mars, then glide past Earth in December at a safe distance of roughly 170 million miles. That last part matters. It poses no threat to us. But the object itself carries clues about the building blocks of alien worlds and the chemistry of star systems will never touch. This is a once-in-a-generation discovery, a glimpse into a deep galactic past sailing straight through our backyard. For most of us, that would be enough. Except this object keeps raising its own stakes. A massive blood-red cloud suddenly bloomed in the dead of space, stretching for thousands of miles. At its heart, 3i Atlas and an image that made comfortable people uncomfortable. Astronomers aimed their telescopes expecting a familiar tail flowing away from the sun. Instead, they met an eerie crimson ghost ahead of the object, glowing towards the sun, not away from it, venting gas at a rate that made calculators sweat, but without the telltale signs of a normal comet. The new frame didn't add a piece to a puzzle. It flipped the table. For the first time, some of the quietest voices in the field said the quiet part in public. This wasn't just unusual, it was something else. Call it the Red Anomaly. The portrait shows a monstrous blood-red coma, an immense cloud of gas and dust shrouding a nucleus you can barely see. This isn't a slight color variation. It's a deep, unsettling crimson astronomers have rarely, if ever, seen at this scale. Stretching 90,000 kilometers from end to end, you could fit more than 10 Earths inside that halo. It's not just the color, it's the chemistry. Spectrographic analysis, the light's chemical fingerprint delivered a complete shock. The cloud is composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide. Not the familiar mix of water, ice and dust and a smattering of frozen gases, but a nearly pure CO2 emission. And it's pouring out at a truly staggering rate every second, as if a thousand invisible smokestacks had been flipped on and left on. An object venting that much material should have a magnificent tail pushed back by the solar wind, stretching for millions of miles. Three guesses what 3i Atlas doesn't have. No visible tail. None. It's like seeing a massive fire with no smoke. That single fact breaks the conventional script. Comets sublimate as they warm. Ice turns directly to gas, releasing dust, building a coma and a tail. 3i Atlas is doing the first part with gusto, but seems to be ignoring the finale. The gas appears, then lingers in this unnatural red cloud, as if trapped inside a performance we don't understand. A cosmic magic trick without a magician, on a scale we can barely hold in the mind. The nucleus, the hard core beneath the fog is an enigma on its own right. Based on early faintness, many assumed it was small, maybe a few miles across. New data, processed from NASA's Ferrex observations, argue for something entirely different, a potential nucleus 46 kilometers across, about 28 miles. That's not a rock, that's a small world. 
an object that large composed of what must be frozen CO2 and other volatiles should be lighting up like a Christmas tree as it nears the sun. Yet it remains stubbornly faint, lost in its own bloody fog. Too big, too red, too quiet. The result? A picture that makes no sense and a list of contradictions growing longer each night. Hyperactive, yet inert. Loud chemistry, faint body. Model, meet, match. Before this became a cosmic headache, it was a source of genuine joy. 3i Atlas was detected far beyond Saturn's orbit and started brightening early. Astronomers plotted its path and ran back of the envelope forecasts that strayed into delicious words like naked eye visible. People got ready. The comet of the century. Telescopes were tuned. Headlines framed it as a shared event. And then the universe shrugged and chose another genre. As 3i Atlas moved inward, it behaved erratically. The steady brightening went staccato. Flare, fade, flare. The color and shape of the coma shifted. The performer couldn't decide on a role. To people who've watched comets for decades, inconsistency isn't quirk, it's a red flag. Then came the betrayal. Instead of blooming into that promised spectacle, the object fractured. A single point split into a family of smaller points. The comet of the century crumbled before the main event. For the public, the show was over. The channel changed, the sky got old again. For a handful of dedicated researchers, the mystery was just beginning. The fragments didn't dissipate or wander off like ducks. They stayed together, tight, ghostly, a procession of pieces. Each sprouted its own miniature weird halo. And adding fuel to suspicions, the data about that massive CO2 cloud didn't reach the public right away. There was a delay. Science demands review and verification. But this felt different enough to make some people raise their eyebrows. What had those early readings said that needed extra time? Was there a result so unbelievable that even their authors needed to convince themselves? The silence deepened the enigma. To make sense of the present, you have to look at the past. Where did it come from? The carelessly accurate answer is out there. The track we plot is hyperbolic. An open curve. That means 3i Atlas isn't bound to the sun. This isn't a local on vacation. It's a drifter from the gulf between stars. After its brief chaotic visit, it will be flung back into the dark, never to return. It joins a very short list, Oumuamua and Borisov. One strange sliver with invisible jets, one textbook comet with Sinogen bands singing, and now 3i Atlas, which refuses both costumes and steals from both scripts. If you like categories, this object does not like you. An interstellar traveler should be cold and quiet. The volatile ice should have been eroded by starlight during a millionaire drift. What's left is usually water and dust and rock. 3i Atlas turns that logic inside out. The massive carbon dioxide outgassing says, this is a cold comet, a relic from a very cold place, a place where CO2 froze thick and stayed. Perfect preservation awakened on cue. That perfection is suspicious in its own right. It's as if something built an ice chest, packed it, sealed it, and slid it through space until the moment the lid could be cracked. That thought leads to ideas people whisper before they're ready to say them loud. Maybe this is a fragment of a Pluto-like exoplanet. Its frozen mantle knocked free in an ancient catastrophe. That could explain size in CO2. Or maybe it formed in a part of its home star's disk far colder and carbon-rich than our own outer cloud. That would satisfy a model or two. But none of the straight-line natural ideas account for the sheer scale of the coma, the lack of a tail, and the nucleus that glows like a candle lost in a storm. Some scientists have quietly widened the circle of possibility. What if shape and structure sit at the heart of the oddities? If the nucleus isn't a solid ball, but something porous, something like a sponge on a continental scale, the way heat and gas travel would change, and so would what we see. What if the breakup wasn't weakness, but a process, not a failure, but a deliberate or mechanical event, control fragmentation as a way to bleed pressure, expose new venting surfaces, or do something that useful machines do that rocks don't. Those ideas live on the far edge of the discipline. They don't need to be right to be worth running down. Because when every honest conventional explanation runs into a wall, you are obligated to turn on the light in a room you haven't used before. The hardest part of this story isn't picking a favorite hypothesis. It's living with the mess. We have a giant object 28 miles wide, a small world that appears from interstellar space, pretends to be a comet, then warns us with motion and color that it is playing by rules we haven't written. We have a blood-red coma that contains no water and very little of the usual cometry mix, but nearly pure carbon dioxide at staggering rates. We have no tail at all, no smoke to that fire. 
we have fragments that went on behaving rather than dying. We have a nucleus more massive than it should be and fainter than it has any right to be. We have a history of dramatic brightening followed by vanishing acts. And now we have the possibility, raised by the very people who hate raising such things, that this object is no longer a passerby but a participant moving towards Mars with guided intention. Talk of a collision isn't born from fear, it's born from geometry. The trajectory has tightened, the speed has risen, models, blunt and honest, put a non-zero number next to a date. If 3i80 Atlas were to hit Mars, the energy released would be beyond anything that world has seen since the heavy bombardments that scarred it into story. The surface would change, the sky would darken, rovers and orbiters would go blind, then silent. For scientists, it would be a brutal miracle, a chance to witness planetary geology's loudest voice. For everyone else, it would be the news that finally made space feel closer than it ever has. All of this comes to us because we were ready enough to be surprised. Gemini North caught the classic comet head. SPREX gave us hints about the core. Atlas caught the motion early. The timing and distance are generous enough that Earth isn't in danger. That's luck. The capacity to hear a whisper from the edge and hold it long enough to turn into music, that's work. Where does that leave us? Staring at a visitor that acts like a host. Looking at an object that reads like a plan and asking the kind of questions that would make a different audience laugh. If it's a rock, why does it choose red? If it's a comet, where is the tail? If it's ice, why does it glow? If it's a world, why does it break and keep on traveling like a family that refuses to separate? If it's nothing more than sun and dust, why does it drift like an arrow aimed at a date with a planet? There's a quieter truth buried in the drama. Our models are thin. We've built them from a small pile of rocks we could touch and a larger pile we could see. The galaxy is bigger than both piles combined. If the universe feels like it just set our models in fire, it may be saying something kinder than you were wrong. It may be saying you were early. The right answer when confronted with behavior you don't expect is not to throw up your hands and mutter aliens into your coffee. It's to build better instruments, write cleaner code, and let your next model be brave enough to include the weird. When 3i80 Atlas swings inside the orbit of Mars and brushes past the Sun, the Sun will ask it questions that neither we nor it can avoid. Heat will peel back layers. Gravity will test the core. Tension will force choices. Events like that are revelations whether we like what they reveal. If it's natural, it will sing the tune that rocks sing when they're hot and old. If it's something else, it will keep its rhythm in the face of noise and move like a plan rather than a fall. We can live with both outcomes. If it's natural, science becomes wider and better tomorrow than it was today. We'll add a chapter on red comae and pure CO2 comets and cores that hold like sponges. We'll admit ice from other stars carries chemistries we didn't evolve to expect. We'll teach students what it feels like to have the universe change your mind. If it's not natural, we'll have the proof we claim to be ready for. Lines on graphs, not whispers on shows. The kind of sober triumph that lets you look up for longer than the fear in your belly. We should not want the drama more than the accuracy. We should want the truth and the numbers that carry it. Between now and then, your job and mine is the hardest in science. Care longer than you panic. Pay attention, remember dates, listen to people who do math for a living, expect talk of impact to draw heat and talk of impossible to be wrong. Hope not for spectacle, but for clarity. Hold lightly to your favorite story about what 3i80 Atlas is. It will not be the same story when it leaves. It may not be a comet we can pronounce correctly. It may be a ghost. It may be a plan. It will certainly be a neighbor for far fewer days than we deserve. There's a line in an old book that says the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it's stranger than we can imagine. On nights like this one, with headlines too loud and telescopes too earnest, it's worth the small correction that makes the difference. It's stranger than we could imagine yesterday. Today, we can imagine more because a crimson halo sat ahead of a body where no halo should sit, because a tail that should exist didn't, because a nucleus bigger than it should be refused to glow and a fragment train refused to die, 
because a path that should be wild became smooth and a speed that should cool decided to rise. And clever people who love being right said carefully and out loud that Mars should keep an eye on the sky. If you're the sort of person who steps outside and looks up when the new cells don't look away, this is your moment. There'll be nothing to see with naked eyes, not yet. It won't matter. The act of looking makes room. The act of paying attention slows down the rush of spin and lets deeper stories land. Somewhere, under a red halo we barely understand, something is heading for a date with the kind of energy that gives worlds their scars. The best part of being human is that you get to be here to watch the wind write new lines in the sand. Stay for them.